Shalom, shalom, shalom. First and foremost, all praises and up honors due to Yahweh by Hashem Hamashiach, Wa Malak Yahweh Shai. Secondly, this is Brother Yardan W. by Detroit coming back at you with yet another cold cup. Today in this cold cup, we will be reading the book of Job, the 27th chapter. All right, now Job is a mighty, beautiful, powerful book through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai because not only is this a conversation between Job and a few of his friends, but even in the midst of their conversation, a lot is revealed into us. For an example, the judgment of the heathen, Israel being restored, right? And Jacob's trouble, the kingdom, it goes into so much, even the hidden animals that we don't really know about, such as the Leviathan and the behemoth. So Job is a very, very beautiful book, chalked up with many dark sayings and parables. That not everybody's going to understand. Alright. Job is a book of mystery. Alright. It's one of the books of wisdom. Now Job. Was taking place. Um, during the times of the patriarchs. So. Let's get the first precept. Psalms. Chapter 78, verse 1. Give ear, O my people, to my law, and incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old. And that's what we do amongst each other. We may utter a dark saying of old. Verse 3. We have heard and known, and our fathers have told us, right? And on a carnal level, our, our elders have told us. Our grand, Some of our grandparents told us, um... You know, uh, some, well, I won't get into that, but I don't, I don't want to get too deep, but know that our grandparents told us, all right, in the ancient world, you understand? Verse four, we will not hide them from their children, showing to the generation to come the praise of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he hath done. So it's our duty, it behooves that we teach the younger gener generation as well. Yeah, we teach the older, but we also out here for the younger. All right, there's no age limit on learning. Verse five, he has established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. All right, plain upon tables. Verse six, that the generations to come might know them, it's like might know them, even the children which should be born, who should ar arise and declare them to their children that they might set their hope in, in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. Beautiful. So without further ado, we're going to dive into the book of Job, the 27th chapter, and break it down through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shemel Shai. Job chapter 27, verse 1. Moreover, Job continued his parable and said, A God is like as God liveth, who hath taken away my judgment and the almighty who hath vexed my soul all the while my breath is in me and the spirit of God is in my nostrils my lips shall Salakia. my lips shall not speak wickedness nor my tongue utter deceit God forbid that I should justify you till I die I will I will not remove my integrity from me all right now it's about to dive into it my righteousness I hold fast, and I will not let it go. My heart shall not reproach me so as so long as I live. Let mine enemy be as the wicked, and he that riseth up against me as the unrighteous. Now I want to pause because this enemy is Esau, the heathen, the nations. And it doesn't have to say Esau, the Dukes of Edom, the Ishmaelites, the Hagarenes for you to know that it's speaking about the enemy and the, and the heathen and the unrighteous we know it through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem was shy because it's already been foresaid that he would be our enemy right from the very beginning from the foundations of the earth that's Malachi 104 he's the border of wickedness verse 8 for what is the hope of the hypocrite though he hath gained when God take away his soul will God hear his cry when trouble cometh upon him and when you read the Bible, you'll understand that the hypocrite is referring to Esau. 
he's the hip, hip, uh, hypocritical nation. All right, verse 10, let me see something. Uh, it's like in verse nine again, will God hear his cry when trouble cometh upon him, right? And we know the most High doesn't hearken unto the cry or the prayers of the heathen. That's Proverbs 28 and nine. Verse 10, will he delight himself in the almighty? Will he always call upon God? I will teach you by the hand of God that which is the almighty will I not conceal. Behold, all ye yourselves have seen it. Why then are ye thus altogether vain? This is the portion of a wicked man with God and an heritage of oppressors, which they shall receive of the Almighty. If his children be multiplied, it is for the sword. So if his children be multiplied, it is for the sword. So we don't care if Esau, well, we do care. I actually want Esau to procreate, right? So that'd be more of a sacrifice before the Lord. Soon in Isaiah 34 and 7. Let me bring it out. Uh, it's like it's six. The sword of the Lord is filled with the blood, it is made fat with fatness, and with the blood of lambs and goats, with the fats of the kittens, of the rams. For the Lord hath a sacrifice in Basra. And a great slaughter in the land of Idumea. For those who don't know, the land of Idumea is the land of the uh, uh, of the so-called white man, right? Idumea. That's first of all, Slakia. Esau. He's Slakia. The so-called white man is Esau in the Bible, right? And he dwelt in the land of Idumea. So when it speaks about Idumea, it's ultimately referring to Esau, the Edomites. This is another precept. Revelation chapter 17, verse 14. These shall make war with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome them. All right? The lamb is Yahweh All right? That's John 1 and 29. These shall make war with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome them. For he is the Lord of lords and king of kings. They that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Is that what I wanted? Oh, Slakia, 19 and 11. Revelation 19 and 11. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And Yahweh shall wear many crowns, because that represents him conquering each nation. When you conquer a nation, and you take the spoils thereof, you take their gold, their jewels, even their crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. That's not to say nobody knows his true name. The Lord told us a uh, multitude of times. It's Yahweh Shah. That last clause that no man knew but he himself. Nobody truly understands the power and, and the vehemency of how he's coming. Nobody knows the formation and how he's coming and you know how strong is this going to, and mighty is going to be in the spirit. You understand? Verse uh, thirteen. And he was clothed with a vesture, or right? your clothing, your garment, your vesture, dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Right. So in this verse, they say he do it. It's like that he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. So Israel, you would use that verse to say well nobody knows the name of the, of the son of God but in this verse to say and his name is called the word of God so you have to use your comprehension third grade you know, you know English and understand through the spirit that you know it's not saying that nobody knows his name so where are we at let's go back to Job 27 Verse 13. This is the portion of a wicked man with God and the heritage of oppressors, which they shall receive of the Almighty. If his children be multiplied, it is for the sword, and his offspring shall not be satisfied with bread. Let me get one more. Isaiah 14, 21. Prepare a slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers. 
So it's good that they reproduce because now it has more sacrifices, right? So prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. Back to uh, Job 27. That's 22. Verse 15. Those that remain of him shall be buried in death, and his wit uh, widows shall not weep. Though he heap up silver as the dust and prepare raiment as the clay, he may prepare it, but the just shall put it on, and the innocent shall divide the silver. Who is the innocent according to the Bible? Israel. That's Second Ezra 15. All right, let's let's prove it. Because Jake will say, well, anybody could be innocent. That could be anybody. Let's get Second Ezra 15. And 10. It's like you're nine. It's like you. Let's start at eight. I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness, which they profanely commit. Neither will I suffer them in those things in which they exercise themselves. It's like you. They wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and righteous blood cried unto me, who's killed innocently for walking down the street, getting some damn skittles, uh, making a left turn. Who's murdered innocently? It's Israel. That's Yasharala. So the innocent and righteous blood cried unto me, and the souls of the just complain continually. And therefore said the Lord, I will surely avenge them and receive unto me all the innocent blood among them. Let's get another precept. Zechariah 11 and 5, whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty. So they're not innocent, right? In this context, it's like Esau in this context, he's, he, well, he's never innocent. But in this verse, he's not innocent. He's guilty. And they that sell them, blood, it's like, and they that say, it's like, and they that sell them say, blessed be the Lord, I am rich, and their own shepherds pity them not. There's one more. Hmm. This is around 35 and 13. I'll just read the first two. He will not accept any man against the poor man, right? But he will hear the prayer of the oppressed. He will not despise the supplication of the fatherless and the widow when she poured out his uh, her complaint. Right, we're the fatherless right now because we have no idea who we are. Neither do we know our earthly father, and we, we we for sure don't know our heavenly father. Psalms 94 and 21. They gather themselves together against the soul of the righteous and condemn the innocent blood. See that? So let's go back to Job 27. Now we should properly understand that the innocent is who? Israel. Who we left off? I'll read uh, 16 again. Though he heap up silver as the dust, and that's what Esau does. That's James 5 and 3. He, he, he heaps up silver as the dust, right? He tries to gather all the silver and the gold, thinking it may help him, but it won't. But the just Israel, Yasharala, shall put it on, and the innocent shall divide the silver. All right, we're going to take our things back. The things that he stole of us, they're a witness against him. Right, that he uh, and, and evidence that he stole and raped, robbed, and murdered us. Cause so how else did you get that? How else did you get it? Right. A thief is exposed through his possessions. Verse eighteen. 
he buildeth his house as a moth, and as a booth he keepeth slacketh. Booth that keeper maketh. The rich man shall lie down, but he shall not be gathered. He openeth his eyes, and he is not. Right? Rich man in the scriptures is Esau. Terrors take hold of him as waters. A tempest stealeth him away in the night. The east wind carrieth him away, and departeth as a storm hurleth him out of its place. For God shall cast upon him, and not spare. That's similar to Second Ezra 15, what we just read. He will fain flee out of his hand. Men shall clap their hands at him, and shall hiss him out of his place. All right, so we're going to kick Esau the hell out of Jerusalem. All right, kick him out of the, uh, out the holy city, and, and make him go through hell. You understand? Let me get one more precept, similar to our forefathers. Oh, it's like it. That's not what I wanted. 